By the 1940s, the race to perfect the battleship had become a contest of innovation. Speed, armor, and fire control had to work as a more integrated system. Out of this, the Iowa class emerged, a design so advanced that it bridged two eras of warfare. The Iowa class battleships possessed a decisive edge through their advanced radar directed fire control with the fully integrated Mark 38 gun fire control system. This closed loop system linked radar, the plotting room, and automated data channels to continuously measure targets and adjust gunfire. At its heart was the Mark 8 Range Keeper, which was an analog computer that calculated firing solutions using real time inputs from stabilizers, speed logs, gyroscopes, and weather sensors. Equipped with the Mark 8 and later Mark 13 fire control radar, the Iowa class could perform true blind fire by detecting, tracking, and engaging targets solely by radar, day or night, and in poor visibility. This system could distinguish individual 16-inch shell splashes at tens of thousands of yards, enabling precise corrections and rapid salvo adjustments. Remote power control automatically aligned the guns, while parallax correctors ensured salvo convergence. To ensure survivability, each ship carried two complete Mark 38 GFCS units located forward and aft, while protected plotting rooms located deep within the armored citadel. The 1980s modernization added DR-810 muzzle velocity radar, which enhanced accuracy beyond World War II levels. Compared to rivals, the Iowa system was unmatched. Japan's Yamato relied mainly on optical rangefinders and limited early radar incapable of full fire control. Germany's Bismarck used primitive FUMO radar and manual optical corrections. Even earlier U.S. battleships like the South Dakota class lacked Iowa's redundancy, stabilization, and automation, which made Iowa the pinnacle of radar-directed gunnery. The Iowa-class battleships were the first true fast battleships, which merged the firepower and armor of a capital ship with the speed needed to operate in carrier task forces. Designed for a top speed of 33 knots, they could match the 30-knot Essex-class carriers and provide them with escort protection, something no earlier battleship could do. The Iowa class was powered by a massive 212,000 shaft horsepower propulsion plant, which was the most powerful ever installed in a U.S. battleship. The machinery comprised eight Babcock and Wilcox water tube boilers supplying four geared steam turbines. Operating at 600 PSI and 850 degrees Fahrenheit, the system achieved remarkable thermal efficiency for its time. The machinery was also deeply compartmented for survivability, which ensured the ship could keep fighting even after sustaining battle damage. Speed also depended on hull form. The Iowa's sleep 860-foot-long hull and 108-foot beam gave it a low-drag profile and excellent hydrodynamic balance. This combination of length, narrowness, and streamlined design allowed the ship to maintain high speeds while retaining heavy armor and stability at sea. Compared to other battleships, the Iowa stood apart. North Carolina and South Dakota classes could reach only 28 knots, while Japan's Yamato managed about 27 knots, and Germany's Bismarck around 30. Even earlier Richelieu classes capable with 32 knots fell short of Iowa's sustained 33-knot operational speed. With unmatched power, efficiency, and speed, the Iowa class redefined that a battleship could be fast, formidable, and fit for modern naval warfare. The Iowa-class battleships pioneered the extensive use of Special Treatment Steel, or STS, which was a high-quality nickel-chromium alloy developed around 1910. STS combined strength, ductility, and resistance to cracking, which work well for both armor and structural hull plating. This dual-purpose use enhanced protection while reducing weight. The main armor belt featured 12.1 inch of Class A face hardened KC armor backed by STS and sloped at about 19 degrees. This gave an equivalent vertical protection of roughly 17.3 inch at 19,000 yards. STS backing reduced spalling, absorbed impact energy, and enhanced survivability. The main armor deck used 4.75 inch of Class B armor over 1.25 inch of STS for a total of 6 inch. It has additional STS layer to intercept fragments. While the Japanese Yamato class had a thicker 16.1 inch of belt armor, the Iowa's integrated STS system provided comparable effective protection through sloped design and superior metallurgy. STS offered greater ductility and fracture resistance than Japanese VH or German armor, which tended to be more brittle. This made Iowa's armor less prone to cracking under heavy impact. 
By using STS throughout the structure, including splinter decks and hull plating, the Iowa class achieved exceptional protection to weight efficiency. This kept total weight down and maintained 33 knot speed without sacrificing defensive strength. The Iowa class battleships wielded nine 16 inch 50 caliber Mark 7 guns, which offered unmatched flexibility through three main shell types. The Mark 8 armor penetrating was the famed super heavy shell weighed 2,700 pounds and was designed for maximum armor penetration. With a high sectional density and a muzzle velocity of 2,500 feet per second, it could punch through heavily armored warships at long range. Mark 13 high capacity shell weighed about 1,900 pounds and carried roughly 154 pounds of explosive filler, ideal for shore bombardment and devastating soft targets. During the Cold War, the Iowa-class battleships became the only nuclear-armed battleships in history. The W-23 Katy shell was derived from the Army's W-19 design and carried a yield estimated at 15 to 20 kilotons, which gave the guns a strategic deterrent capability. This combination of those three rounds gave the Iowa battleships extraordinary mission versatility, capable of engaging ships, fortifications, or serving as nuclear deterrents. The 16-inch Mark 7 gun and 2,700-pound Mark 8 shell produced the highest effective striking power of any conventional battleship. At 20,000 yards, the shell could penetrate about 20 inches of armor, superior to most 15-inch and 14-inch guns. While Japan's Yamato fired heavier 18.1-inch shells, the Iowa Superior Ballistics made its 16-inch guns nearly equal in penetration at long ranges. With the W-23 option, the Iowa-class uniquely delivered nuclear firepower. The Iowa-class battleships featured one of the most advanced layered anti-aircraft defenses of World War II, combining range, firepower, and cutting-edge technology. Its system consisted of long-range 5-inch dual-purpose guns, mid-range 40mm Bofors, and close-in 20mm Ehrlichens. Ten twin 5-inch, or a total of 20 guns, were directed by the Mark 37 fire control system, assisted by precise radar targeting. For mid-range defense, the ships carried 20 quad 40mm Bofors, which was an astonishing 80 barrels of sustained firepower. Close-in defense was handled by numerous 20mm Ehrlichens for rapid engagement of incoming aircraft. The most revolutionary element was the variable time or proximity fuse, which was used by the 5-inch guns. Containing a miniature radar unit, it detonated automatically when within several feet of a target. This innovation made VT-fused rounds about three times more effective than traditional time shells, dramatically increasing the fleet's survivability against kamikaze and dive bomber attacks. The Iowa class outclassed its contemporaries in AA capability due to weapon density, radar control, and the VT fuse. Japan's Yamato class relied on less effective 25mm Type 96 guns and lacked radar guided directors. Germany's Bismarck class ships lacked both Bofors and radar fuse dual purpose guns. By integrating radar control and VT technology, the Iowa class achieved unparalleled AA lethality and coordination unmatched by any battleship of its era. The Iowa-class battleships demonstrated unmatched longevity, with all four ships, Iowa, New Jersey, Missouri, and Wisconsin, reactivated in the 1980s under the Reagan-era 600-ship Navy program. Their 1940s-built hulls remained structurally sound, able to endure fatigue, handle new electronic and missile loads, and maintain seaworthiness without major redesign. Each modernization, costing around $500 million per ship, transformed them into credible missile-age warships capable of operating until 1992. While retaining their 9-inch Mark 7 guns, the ships gained 32 Tomahawk cruise missiles in 8 armored box launchers and 16 Harpoon anti-ship missiles. Older anti-aircraft weapons were removed and some 5-inch mounts deleted to make room for modern systems. The modernized Iowas received four Phalanx mounts, Mark 36 chaff launchers, and Nixie torpedo countermeasure. Their new electronic suites included electronic warfare systems, advanced radars, upgraded fire control systems, and satellite communication links, which fully integrated them into modern carrier battle groups. These upgrades enabled multi-role flexibility, land attack, anti-ship, and air defense. They were deployed in Lebanon, the Persian Gulf, and during Operation Desert Storm, firing guns and missiles in combat. Unlike Yamato, Bismarck, or King George V classes, which were lost at war or obsolete post-war, the Iowa's structural strength, 33-knot speed, and adaptability allowed integration with late 20th-century naval warfare. No other World War II battleship matched their modernization capacity, relevance, or 50-year operational lifespan. Thank you for watching and see you in our next videos.